Welcome to Making a Difference, a show about people who are making the gorge a great place to live. We live in such a beautiful place here in the Columbia River Gorge. Hi, I'm Elaine Busby. Now, part of what contributes to this beauty is not just the landscape, but the wildlife that shares this area with us. Did you know that the Cascades Migratory Flyway crosses the gorge, bringing many species of birds to this area? Now, sometimes these birds are injured, and well-meaning people try to rescue them. But where can they turn? A well-respected but hidden little gem in the Columbia River Gorge called the Rowena Wildlife Clinic, the subject of this edition of Making a Difference. There you go. This golden eagle will never fly in the wild again. He hatched from a nest near Mosier in the spring. Property owners spotted him on their dirt road a few months later. When Dr. Jean Seifer from the Rowena Wildlife Clinic first saw him lying on the road, she reports that he looked to be dead. But she brought him to her secluded place up in the hills off Highway 30 between Rowena and the Dalles and took him under her wing. So when we, when we picked him up, uh, he really couldn't stand, and he was just walking on both uh, ankles. And, you know, he was only a, a couple of months old, so it didn't make sense for him to have lead poisoning, for which that's a classic sign. Um, uh, so, and, and he was emaciated, you know, so it was partially the weakness. But I'm thinking he must have been hit uh, by a car around his hips. Over the course of two to three weeks, Dr. Seifer says his right leg recovered, but not his left. They performed physiotherapy for a year on the eagle, even taking him to a specialist in Eugene. Nothing has worked, except their time and attention. Uh, and, and usually when you walk in here, he, he talks to you and kind of turns his head upside down and, and is excited about his food. I think he ate too much yesterday is why he isn't eating today. But So he'll be a good education bird. The goal is to rehabilitate and release animals. And so far, since the Rowena Wildlife Clinic opened in the year 2000, they have treated well over 200 injured and orphaned native animals each year. And some, even though their physical injuries are healed, still aren't mentally ready to go back into the wild. This great horned owl is one example. He had come from an orchard in the Dalles with an open wound and gunshot in his eyes. Owls don't need to achieve as much height as other birds to get their prey, and Dr. Seifer judged he could fly and see well enough to go. However, as she found out when they tried to release him, he had other ideas. He was just a disaster. It was as if he was just telling us, you know, that he didn't want to go. The first thing he did was uh, kind of limp along into the underbrush and then he flew down into the pond and swam across the pond and then limped back into the underbrush and so I I just chased him down and caught him up again it was it was pathetic so then I thought well <laughs> I think this is a sign yeah. the owl is back in captivity at the Rowena Wildlife Clinic but he's turned out to be a great foster bird so he is not without companionship or a purpose by him sitting on the perch and focusing on, on, the, on the rats that they're supposed to be chasing, the other one starts kind of watching him and watching the rats. And he'll catch a rat and he'll share it with the other one, which I think is sort of natural owl behavior. All sorts and sizes of native animals arrive at the clinic. Dr. Seifer has rehabilitated raccoons, skunk, fox, seagulls, and even deer. This one was attacked by dogs, whereas Dr. Seifer says most of the deer that come to the clinic arrive in the fall and are hit by drivers. In addition to native animals at the clinic, Dr. Seifer works with CatLink in the Dalles to neuter and spay feral cats, over 600 a year. As you can imagine, it's too much work for one vet. So the Rowena Wildlife Clinic also serves as the perfect training ground for veterinary interns from all over the United States. Dr. Seifer lets them gain valuable hands-on experience. They operate, and she gives out pointers when needed. Wiggle and, and cut underneath there. Okay. There's like one. Uh, there's three of them in there okay. that they were in, in so that one. So I'd start maybe with that one. Just shave them up though first? Nope, no, just, just, just cut. Just. And we'll just clean off afterwards. There's a lot of work. <laughs> there's a lot of things to be done. There's a lot of animals that need help. And, um, you know, Gene works. <laughs> unbelievable amount of hours. I can't imagine being able to do this year round. Um, just for the month that I've been here, we pretty much have, uh, we start at seven in the morning and we finish uh, around 12 at night. So yeah, it's, 
It's long days and there's a lot to be done. The hours are long and the jobs can be tedious. To keep up and running, the clinic uses about five fully trained volunteers to assist with cleaning the cages, preparing and feeding food to the animals, and even driving to pick up injured animals. Susan Lestock is a volunteer who does all that and also assists with public relations, fundraising, and even teaching birds basic handling skills. We watched as she worked with a rough-legged hawk on the glove to help it with balance, a job which has its rewards and punishments. Once you kind of figure out what their intuition is and which way they're going to move when you move certain ways, it makes it easier. And it only took one swipe of a talon on my arm to get me <laughs> to really respect um, handling them. But yeah. I, that happened when I was feeding, so, yeah. but only once. Most of the animal patients at the Rowena Wildlife Clinic require x-rays, orthopedic surgery, and around a three and a half month course of rehabilitation. And even then, less than 40% make it. The percentages of survival are slim. So when the lucky ones are returned to their natural habitat, it's a special day. We watched one morning in early summer as Dr. Seifer and her crew of veterinary interns arrived at a private homeowner's pond in Hood River with a batch of mallard ducks. The ducks had been brought to the clinic by a trucker along the I-5 corridor. A fellow's mother called from Cottage Grove and he was a trucker who was on his way up I-5 and saw them running around in the uh, uh, at the side of the road. So he picked him up and he was en route to the Dalles. So his mom was frantically calling while he was en route to find a, a number and, and we met him down uh, on I-84. Dr. Seifer spent the standard three months rehabilitating the ducks who really just needed to get big enough to fend for themselves. The release went off without a hitch, making at least some of the hard work at the clinic worth the effort. All right, little guys, off you go. If you'd like to support the Rowena Wildlife Clinic, please visit their website, rowenawildlifeclinic.org. Stay with us. Making a Difference will be back to talk to Dr. Jean Seifer about what you can do to prevent injuries to our area's wildlife. <laughs>